This was a very personal decision, but I wanted to share with you guys that I decided to get a breast augmentation. And? Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to be pulling up a video that it's actually almost a year old now, but was recently resurfaced when Stephanie Buttermore made a very honest and authentic post on Instagram. In it, she recounted the negative feedback to her 2023 video, revealing that she had a breast augmentation. And nearly a year later, she shares that she's finally at peace with the trolls and has even come to understand the appeal of reactionary content like the video that Greg Doucette posted right after her announcement. I also want to just say that I'm not sure if she's also referencing me in this post as the two of us kind of had a bit of a falling out after I interviewed Greg on my channel, which I understand perhaps felt like a bit of a betrayal to her. But I want to just say that I am and always have been a fan of Stephanie's and any content that I do make about it is never meant to criticize, but rather to draw attention to the incredible work that she has done in this space. But before we get into it, if you are not already subscribed, I would love that from you. It really does help me out. Also, don't forget to hit up my description for a free Hunger Crush and Combo ebook and Protein 101 ebook and a link to order my new two-in-one plant-based probiotic protein powder, New Theory. But let's take a beat to tell you about my sponsor today, Armra Colostrum. If you followed my channel, you know that I have struggled with IBS basically my whole life, and I spent nearly two years treating SIBO after severe bouts of mastitis postpartum. And one of the key supplements that really helped me rebuild my gut was colostrum. So in research, we often see colostrum called liquid gold because it's a nutrient-dense bioactive whole food. And if you're a parent, you probably know that babies rely on colostrum to thrive in the first few days of life. So Armour Colostrum comes from grass-fed, family-owned dairy cows and offers over 400 functional nutrients like peptides, antibodies, and antioxidants that help to support gut health and immunity by strengthening the mucosal barriers of the gut. Now, obviously the health of the gut is essential to the health of literally every other bodily system. So colostrum may help to support things like skin, hair, gut immunity, mental health, and exercise recovery. So this made a huge difference in supporting my gut post SIBO antibiotics. And I'm just really happy to report that my gut has been in great shape ever since. Now, because it's a bioactive whole food, you can technically take as many servings as you'd like, but generally speaking, most folks start around three. And Armour's colostrum really is the best of the best. They use cold chain biopotent technology to protect the nutrients and remove any casein and fat, and they third-party test their products for purity and efficacy. The great news is that they are giving my audience 15% off of their first purchase. So if you're looking to help support your gut, go to try armra.com slash Abby Sharp or enter the code Abby Sharp to get 15% off of your first order. That's T-R-Y-A-R-M-R-A dot com slash Abby Sharp. Okay, let's take it back to April 2023 to Stephanie Buttermore's most recent body recap video where she shares what's going well and what she still is working on in her all-in journey. So things that I feel like I've been doing really well with are things like not skipping breakfast or skipping any meals, which can be tempting if you're just like, oh, I'm not hungry, I'll eat later. And before you know it, you're intermittent fasting again. So even if it's just like a protein shake, I'll always have something in the morning. So this is a really great tip. And to a lot of folks who don't fully understand intuitive eating, they may be thinking, well, isn't that unintuitive to eat if you are not actually hungry? Absolutely not. Intuitive eating is not just the hunger and fullness diet. In fact, thinking about intuitive eating this way can actually prevent a lot of folks with a history of disordered eating from recovery because they often just don't have clear hunger cues, which they then can use to justify them just not eating. 
And this isn't even just limited to folks with disordered eating. Sometimes you just get super busy or stressed and you very easily override your hunger cues. With regards to hunger at breakfast specifically, your body tends to learn that it will be fed at these kind of predictable times in the day. So if you all of a sudden just stop eating breakfast, your body will stop expecting it and downregulate those AM hunger hormones, which for someone like Stephanie, who's worked so hard to regulate her hunger and satiety cues, could in fact lead her back to square one. At its core, intuitive eating is actually about self-care and honoring your body's needs. So slowing down to eat something and not skip meals for someone like Stephanie may in fact be a really important act of self-care. Another thing is eating a bowl of carbs without the compulsion to add protein, but not adding protein to everything feels like sacrilege to me. It's hard. I don't know why, but for some reason it's super hard. I think it's a true testament that I'm allowing myself to eat something just for the pleasure of eating it and not for the sake of function. Obviously, I try my best to keep my diet balanced and adding protein and eating protein is very good. Most people should do it if you struggle getting in your total daily protein, but I shouldn't fear eating a bowl of carbs just because I didn't add protein to it. I love this. And this is coming from someone who has trademarked a concept called the hunger crushing combo that advocates for dressing up naked carbs with protein, fiber, and healthy fats. The only rule of my hunger crushing combo is that there are actually no rules. Like Stephanie said, we obviously know that it's advantageous to have balanced meals and snacks to support satiety, blood sugars, energy levels, and just general nutrient status, which is ultimately the point of my hunger crushing combo, but not every meal or snack needs to be a perfect HCC. Nor should you fear or avoid naked carbs. The goal is actually the opposite here. It's to neutralize their power and embrace the naked carbs that you love judgment-free. Most often dressed up in a way that feels good to your body, but sometimes just as is. Some days I want you to have that birthday cake in its perfect unadulterated state. Sometimes I want you to order the pasta carbonara with like no vegetables or protein in sight. Some days you're only gonna be hungry for like a small handful of chips and you don't need or want the production of like adding a high protein dip. Whether you come from a disordered eating background or not, the goal is to strip food of their morality so that you can get in tune with your body's true needs, desires, and sensations. And sometimes a bowl of straight up carbs is exactly what you need. It's really all about an overall balanced dietary pattern, not the individual meals. And if manipulating your favorite food with extra ingredients every single time ruins the experience for you, it's not a good HCC. Sometimes it will make sense to throw in some veg and protein in there, and other times it doesn't. So yeah, I think this is a great exercise for Stephanie. Eating a high calorie meal and a high calorie dessert, not just one, if I really want both. Just giving myself that freedom and not restricting by eating both if I want to. If I don't want it and I feel full, that's fine. But if I do, I eat it. So I was actually watching Greg Doucette's reaction to the statement where basically he was comparing Stephanie allowing herself to eat pizza and dessert with his morbidly obese client. If he eats until he's full and satiated, has a high calorie pizza and a high calorie dessert, he's gonna become even more obese. And seeing as he wants to live a long and healthy life, and so how is that unhealthy eating behavior? So Greg isn't wrong here. Like making a diet choice to improve your health is of course not an unhealthy behavior. But healthy and unhealthy are incredibly subjective terms. A health promoting behavior to Greg's obese client may be purposefully putting yourself in a calorie deficit. Whereas a health promoting behavior for Stephanie may be doing everything in her power to avoid a calorie deficit. Like both of these behaviors can be healthy or unhealthy depending on your intentions, goals, health status, history, etc. Weight loss is Greg's client's goal, and food freedom is Stephanie's goal. And giving herself unconditional permission to have cake and pizza if she wants may help prevent her from slipping back into unhealthy patterns. 
What constitutes self-care and healthy is really gonna look very different to different people. And her sharing that this is what has helped her on her journey doesn't mean that it's going to be the right path for everyone else. There are times when I know I'm indiscriminately eating a ton of delicious food and my pants start to feel a bit tight. In those instances, my diet brain likes to butt in and wants so badly to take charge. And it starts shouting all the ways that I can like lose that little bit of extra weight that I put on. Things like, no, don't order out, just cook. Or don't skip the gym even if I'm tired and don't feel like going. Behaviors that lead down a slippery slope. Recognizing that it's happening is the first really big step, but then addressing it is just as important. So this is huge. And I'm really proud of Stephanie for acknowledging and also sharing this so transparently because it's really a good reminder that these journeys are not linear. They're messy, they're imperfect. And when you've spent years restricting and obsessing over being impossibly thin, you don't just turn that off. Like a lot of people believe that you don't ever fully heal from an ED. You just basically learn how to manage it. You know, it's really no different than what Taylor Swift said in her Miss Americana documentary. These women have made huge strides in their relationship with food and their body simply by acknowledging what triggers their diet brains and then being able to step in and say, nope, we don't do that anymore. We do not do that anymore. And you just, we're just, we're changing the channel in our brain and we're not, not doing that anymore. For most people with a history of body dysmorphia or an ED, this is the path forward. You know, the voice may be waiting in the wings, but you've developed the skills to shut it down before these thoughts turn into behaviors. Now, just an FYI, she's about to show her body and talk physique. Just in case you don't wanna see that section, this would be the time to sign off. This is what I currently look like. I actually have no idea how much I weigh, but I feel like my weight has been relatively stable for the past year, but it's been more or less consistent. I think this is where my body is happy. I feel healthy, I don't feel tired all the time, my appetite is very normal. And this is generally the litmus test for one's set point weight, aka the weight range that your body naturally falls into when you are not restricting, which I actually talked a lot more about right here. So you will generally have normal hunger and fullness signals. You'll feel energized and fueled in your daily activities and intentional exercise while feeling well rested when you get up in the morning. And you generally just won't be thinking about food all the time. So this was all a really great, amazing update. And then she drops the controversial confession that she got breast implants. That I decided to get a breast augmentation. This is something that I did for me and the specific reasons are very personal and I'm not comfortable sharing the reasons. Let's just say a lot of her fans did not take the news so well. One person said, I see no difference between you and Kim Kardashian at this point. Have to unfollow. Another said, Unfollow. You preached body confidence and plastic surgery is not that. And a third said, LOL, didn't you make a post throwing shade at Jeff's ex for having implants a few years ago and tagged your post, hashtag team natural, hashtag and proud? Pretty sad to see how unhappy you will always be with your body. This is also where Greg Doucette chimed in with his take, which honestly was pretty balanced because on the one hand, he was affirming that she's entitled to do whatever she wants with her body, but at the same time, her followers had questions. This is the same person who has been preaching to love and accept your body no matter what, but yet she now has breast augmentation surgery. And so if you really truly love your body, would you actually need to get surgeries in order to look better? They wanna know why. They wanna know why is it now that you don't love your body? You're saying you do, but based on the evidence, it doesn't seem that way. I have a lot of thoughts. First of all, I'm just gonna say it, but I do not believe that wanting to augment your body cosmetically means that you inherently don't love or respect your body. As I've discussed, the body positivity movement wasn't necessarily designed for straight size folks like Stephanie or myself, which is why I prefer to use the term body respect or body neutrality. 
But semantics aside, at their core, these concepts are grounded in autonomy and self-love, including the freedom to make choices about one's body that feel empowering and authentic. And while there isn't a consensus as to whether plastic surgery can be body positive, my interpretation is that as long as the decision to undergo plastic surgery is made freely without external pressure or expectation and is in line with an individual's own values and goals, I do believe that it can coexist with a body neutral mindset. And there is some research that shows that individual satisfaction with their body image and self-confidence can be improved following aesthetic surgery. Now, obviously this is not a first line solution and definitely in some cases it can be a very slippery slope, but if a boob job is part of Stephanie's journey to self-confidence and it feels empowering to her, then who are we to call her out or fault her for that? And for the criticism that this is like off-brand or hypocritical, you know, this reminds me a lot of when Lizzo got pushback for doing a juice cleanse. You know, like Lizzo, Stephanie never claimed to be 100% body positive 100% of the time. Just because she's shown ample evidence of her capacity to respect her body by feeding it adequately and appropriately since going all in, which is huge by the way, it doesn't mean that she adores every piece of her body at every moment of the day. Like even the most body positive creators out there probably can't honestly say that every single time they see themselves in the mirror, they think, damn, I am so hot. You know, I think that body respect is just a much more realistic goal. And honestly, research confirms that it might be a better message to spread anyway. You know, one of the criticisms of the body positivity movement on social media is that it can actually potentially make some women feel worse about themselves when they do have a singular insecure thought. So I think Stephanie sharing her truth that two things can be true, that she can now feed her body well because she respects it and she can want bigger breasts may actually be comforting for a lot of women who also share those two truths. Finally, I saw a note saying, well, well, what about her disclosing her lip fillers as that may also be giving into unrealistic beauty standards. And I had this thought like, where do we draw the line on what aesthetic treatments now constitute having body image issues? Is Botox now a sign of weakness? What about dyeing your hair or waxing your legs or even putting on makeup? Sure, we could trace a lot of these cosmetic enhancements back to the patriarchy and societal beauty standards. Everything exists to expand and elevate the presence of men. A lot of women may truly feel in their heart that they're doing this for themselves. And ripping women apart for making choices that they feel are best for them just further strips us of our bodily autonomy. I know, that's my honest take. Listen. I will be the first to agree that social media really does perpetuate unrealistic beauty standards. And yes, beautiful influencers altering their appearance via surgery does play a role, but the use of Photoshop and filters are like far more rampant. This is not going away anytime soon. And what we probably need is just better media literacy to help young people understand that what they see online is actually not real life. The only scenario where I'm vehemently against influencers altering their body is if they're like selling something and dishonestly claiming that their surgically altered body was actually the result of their program, plan, or product. It's like that scene from Legally Blonde when Ali Larder is willing to go to jail rather than reveal that her body was the result of liposuction and not her signature exercise program. Liposuction! <laughs> Oh God! Wow. I know, I'm fried. Like that's false advertising and that should be called out. But reprimanding a creator who has clearly helped so many people on their journeys to recovery because she shared she had a boob job? Like why? Like I highly doubt that Stephanie's breasts are gonna become the primary subject of any of her upcoming videos. So this detail that she shared about her body her own private body really does not negate the value that she brings to this platform. And on that note, thank you for coming to my TED talk. 
If you want to hear more of my thoughts on plastic surgery and body positivity, I actually talked a little bit about my own experience and consideration for my super bad diastasis recti in my video right here. But a reminder to please be kind in the comments here and on Stephanie's platform. I truly do wish her all of the best. And don't forget to give this video the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.